What's up folks, Maximilian here, and welcome back to another Call of Duty video featuring information and breakdowns for Black Ops 2. So, like we were saying earlier, there was a lot of information that came out when all these uh, NDAs were lifted over the past week, and a lot of YouTubers got their hands on the game and were throwing information left and right, and I wanted to take the more important little tidbits from all of this and kind of go over them and discuss them in a video. So, moving on from this information, the previous one was talking about how, like, there's no Moabs, there's no hidden killstreak, there's no nukes, they're working on the sound design for the game, how sniping is gonna work. Let's move into a little bit more of the, uh, the nitty-gritty about how the feel of the game is and how Black Ops is actually really going to work when we get our hands on it. One of the things that I'm really digging about, um, about Black Ops 2 is the fact that when you prestige, the weapon and the challenge progression on the guns you're using finally are not going to reset. That's one of the things that kind of irked me about the game, was that in the original Call of Duties, or any Call of Duties before uh, Black Ops 2, you get this gun, you do all this work for it, and you lose it. You lose every single thing off of it at the end of that prestige. What, what this means is that in Black Ops 2, you, it might still take you to get to like level 50 or level 40 to get said weapon, but when you acquire said weapon, you actually have everything already on it that you might have acquired in the previous prestige. What this encourages is people using more guns. Now, when you, you when you get to those guns early, you kind of want to stick with it so you can get all your attachments and you know, all the stuff that you would like to have on the weapon. And you don't really use much else because by spending that much time, you're just going through your prestiges again and bleh, you don't have any other time to use other guns. So this really gets me excited because it gives me the chance to use a lot more more weapons when going through the initial 10 prestiges. That's my thing when I, when I burn through the prestiges. I try to get through them as fast as possible so I can have all the weapons and everything at my disposal at, at finally at 10th prestige and finally have the sweet icon or status symbol. That's just the way it goes. It's called prestige for a reason. And I think this is a great thing for guys that like prestiging quickly like myself. Moving on, a lot of folks were talking about the spawn system in Black Ops 2 and how it potentially is the best spawn system in a Call of Duty. Now this is one that you can definitely take with a grain of salt, but they were mentioning how it doesn't flip very quickly, like when you get into an enemy spawn and the spawn will just immediately switch sides even if one enemy target is in the area. That, that is one of the things that was really bad in Modern Warfare 3 and it caused the team, or caused the enemy team to just be all over the place and you had no idea what was going on and they were literally spawning left and right which allowed you to get things like kill cam sessions. Now, what they're saying is that they didn't ever had any opportunities where dudes were spawning like in front of them or they were spawning in front of dudes so there's a good chance that Treyarch might have had Finally, finally, a good spawn logic in Black Ops 2, because Black Ops spawn logic was pretty good. If they can improve on that, hallelujah, I can't wait to see what it's like. And that's one of the biggest things about getting good at a Call of Duty, is understanding early on, especially when the game is first coming out, where your enemy is, and where they're going to be spawning. That's one of the most important aspects that you need to figure out when you first start, or when you first start playing these games. Moving on, one of the next things they're talking about is how League play is being heavily emphasized from Treyarch, and that your League ranking and medal will be on your player card. If you guys haven't seen this, there's a separate option of online matchmaking for League play, and then they have the player match that we're accustomed to, like the ranked match system. What this means is that this League play thing, I don't know how it's exactly going to be handled because they're talking a lot about the esports competitive environment for this game, and I think League play definitely is going to be a huge part of that, but how and what game modes you'll be playing, things along those lines haven't been revealed. I'm just extremely excited for it because it's one of those things where it's going to pitch you up against other dudes that are extremely good. Whether like host advantage goes into situations like that I think will be really important. If you can possibly connect to Treyarch servers for League Play only, that would be amazing. That would even everybody's playing field out, but who knows, we haven't heard anything about it yet and hopefully within the next few days we'll find out some more. Moving on, some things that have been uh, declassified finally are that aim assist still exists for snipers. People were saying that it wasn't actually around anymore if you want to try to quick scope and do the old usual Call of Duty sniping that you're used to. It definitely is still there so you don't have to worry about it. Moving on to some of the higher score streaks, things like the, the dogs and the, um, the all the different uh, drones in the air and stuff like that. Supposedly they're very hard to get. If you play for kill death and you play the objective, it will be a lot easier, but if you're the guy that's running around just killing guys and not playing the objective, it's going to be a rough time. And those kill streaks are very high, and they're kind of on the equal range of getting a Moab in Modern Warfare 3, depending on your class. So, 
kind of excited about that, that we're going to have these exclusive kill streaks similar to ones that we had in previous Call of Duties. But a lot of folks are saying the fact that Ghost is going to be powerful and overused. The reason being is that UAVs are one of the first score streaks you can unlock. We all know that. But in, in Black Ops 2, when you get a UAV and your UAV is in the sky, you're going to be getting assist points that will go towards future kill streaks and your score. And those assist points will actually let you build higher and higher. Now, this means that UAVs are powerful in this regard. Anytime somebody gets killed under a UAV, that assist point goes to you, and it means that there's going to be a ton of them in the sky. Like, this was kind of an issue with Modern Warfare 3. Support skill streaks, I think, kind of ruined a lot of Modern Warfare 3 because it wasn't difficult. None of this stuff was special anymore. The fact that there was literally 7 to 10 stealth bombers per game meant that stealth bombers are total crap and just as powerful as ever. So it's, it's one of those things where I hope it's balanced. I really hope Ghost isn't an overpowered perk, but I can see the I can see it being very overpowered. I only hope that Ghost isn't something that counters other stuff. Like I, I'm pretty sure they're doing this. And Assassin was a, a huge problem in Modern Warfare 3 because it was even more powerful than Ghost in a lot of situations because it blocked EMPs, it blocked counter UAV. Counter UAV will be the proper counter to Ghost in this situation where uh, where you'll be able to stop Ghost guys from seeing where they should be going. So I'm excited for that. That counter UAV will probably will properly work the way it should. Uh, moving on, they're saying that the Hunter Killer, which is essentially, I call it the paper airplane, you literally throw this little robotic device into the air and it flies off and essentially takes out the first target it sees. It's the new RCXD. You're going to be seeing them a lot. They're going to be difficult to shoot down and they're going to be after your ass. I called the RCXD the kill streak killer because that's what it was to me. Every time I was on a high-end kill streak in the original Black Ops, got my Blackbird, got my you know my chopper gunner working on dogs, and right before all that stuff happens, then RCXD flies out of the wall and blows me up in the face. Um, I only hope that things like the Hunter Killer kill you with explosive damage and the RCXD in Black Ops 2, and I hope that whatever flak jacket equivalent is in this game can properly block it. That's all I asked for, and I really hope it is the case. Moving on, Scavenger is actually going to work the same way it did in the original Black Ops, not like Modern Warfare 3. You can actually replenish your equipment and lethal items. In Modern Warfare 3, you might remember, that stuff you couldn't recover anymore, and it made Scavenger almost useless, almost practically useless. It ended up being just an extended magazine because it gave you more ammunition. Very excited about that, and it might make a lot of more, uh, a lot more interesting class setup dynamics. A lot of information about the shotgun. Supposedly the S12 is a lot like the Spas. It's pretty good. The KSG gives similar hit markers like Modern Warfare 3. The, Rem the Remington is a more reliable stakeout, and the stakeout was pretty bad in the original Black Ops. The M1216 is a four-burst AA-12, so that's the shotgun that'll be shooting a ton of rounds really quickly and really fast, so... That's one of the things you can expect from me if you want to guys, if you guys want to check out my channel at youtube.com slash miles923. If you are watching this on Respawn, is I am very much into shotguns and I am very much into getting into enemy spawns and taking out a ton of dudes with shotguns, which is why I really enjoyed Modern Warfare 2 and the spas in that game. So when Black Ops 2 rolls around, I'll be doing a lot of complete weapon breakdowns for the shotguns so we can finally understand what makes certain shotguns good, what makes certain shotguns bad, and what the shotguns need to improve upon if they actually want to be decent, because if you remember Modern Warfare 3, shotguns were very bad for a very long time sans the striker. Nonetheless, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up or once again check out my channel at youtube.com slash miles923 for comprehensive coverage on fighting games, a lot of different competitive games, shooters, and essentially the love of yo video games. My name is Maximilian, signing out.